Hey, it's Chef Piet de Spain, winner of Next Level Chef, and I'm going to be sharing a recipe with you that really hits home. Now that we are approaching the holiday seasons, I think about what my dinner table looks like as my friends and my family gather around, and there's always one thing that's always on the table, tamales. So I'm gonna be showing you a very easy recipe that you can do without taking the hours and the days and days of prepping like my family did growing up. Usually it would be an assembly line of cousins and aunties and your grandmother leading the way to make all of these tamales to feed the whole family. But I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of a secret, a little bit of a trick to expedite that process by using a pressure cooker. So I have some ingredients here. We have some dried corn masa here that we can add to our bowl. And I have some softened butter as well. You can also use lard, and if you wanna make these vegan, you can use a vegetable shortening as well. And then we can add in our baking powder. Don't forget the baking powder, guys. So let's go ahead and mix that up. And we started with soft butter because it's a lot easier to mix in our dough or into our masa here. And I'm going to pour in half of my water, not all of it just to kind of get that mixture going. And this is a lot easier when you're using a stand mixer, but today I'm just gonna use it, my good old elbow grease to <laughs> mix this mixture up here. So I'm using my spoon here to kind of break up those pieces of butter. Scraping the sides. And we'll add some more of our water here. Now my favorite way to eat tamales is usually the next day after they're made because the flavors just really set in and it just tastes better the next day. Now this particular recipe, we're going to be utilizing some poblano chiles and some corn and cotija cheese. And we will be making a creamy avocado salsa to pair it off. All right, now this is about the time where your masa will start to crumble and kind of look sandy. This means you're on the right track. I know if you are out there using your, your hands and your arms to mix this, don't give up, you're on the right track. Finishing off the rest of my water and just continuing to mix and mix and mix. So now that I've been mixing for a while, this is the consistency of my masa. And a good trick to know when your masa dough is ready for tamal, you can get a glass of water and put a ball of your masa dough in the water. If it sinks, you have to keep stirring. If it floats, then it's ready. And it's floating! So now that our masa dough is ready, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our filling. So I'll set this to the side. And now I have some beautiful poblano chiles here that I'm going to char off. If you have a grill, that would be nice to use. But if you don't and you have a gas stove, you can use the flame that's on top of your stove top to char the outer skins of your peppers. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring these over here to our stove top. So here on a medium heat flame, I can go ahead and just set these around the flame here. And you want to be very careful that you don't burn yourself and you'll start to hear them pop a little, which is totally fine. You want to use metal tongs to rotate your peppers around the flame. Once you start to hear it pop, that's totally normal. That just means that the skin is charring. So this is what we're looking for here on this nice char. So it's just a consistent turning so they don't get too burnt on one side. We also don't want the pepper to be fully submerged into a flame. 
because it will catch on fire and we don't want that. We just want it to char the outer skin. And as it starts to char, the inside of that pepper will actually start to cook down a little bit. And once we have a char fully on the outside of all of them, we will let it steam in a bowl and the outer skin will become really soft and we can use our fingers to peel away that charred skin and we'll cut that up and put it into our filling and it will have that nice little char flavor to it, the filling of our tamales. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit more rotating on these guys. smells so good. That char on the skin really reminds me of that home cooking that we all love so much, especially during the holidays with our family. Cooking in the kitchen is just very nostalgic. They say the best food is food that is, has a nostalgic flavor to it. And charring peppers for me is very nostalgic. Sometimes it's, you know, over open flame outside, but we don't have the uh, capabilities to do that right now. I don't. And if you need to rotate some of your peppers around the flame, go ahead and do that. I have this guy over here that isn't charring as much as I want it to. So I switched peppers with the smaller ones so it has more exposure to that flame. We want to make sure that all of our chiles are getting even amount of char. We don't want any of the skin to be too green like this. So now that we got a nice char on our chiles here of our poblano peppers, we can go ahead and put them into a bowl. And I'll be putting a towel or a plate over the bowl just to trap some of that steam, the heat from the chiles, so the skin can begin to soften so it's easier to peel. Now we have this beautiful char on these, look at that. This is what we're looking for. So I have a towel down here. I can go ahead and cover it and wait for it to soften and to cool. Now our chiles are nice and cool. We can actually handle them. I'm going to be showing you guys how to peel the skin and discard them. They will have a bitter flavor to them, so we don't want to keep them attached to the chile as we're moving them moving forward to put them into our filling so we have here this beautiful chile and now we can just use our fingers to press against the chile and just remove all of that skin and it is a little easier to do it under running water just so that way it just gets collected into a little strainer on the bottom of your sink but look how easily those just peel off that charness. Now poblano peppers aren't too spicy. You can keep the seeds in if you choose. I'm going to go ahead and remove the seeds on mine just because I don't want there to be any seeds in my filling mixture and sometimes it can be a little bitter sometimes. And even if you wanted to use a paper towel, you can press it against here and just rub it off. This one's pretty easy, I'm using my hands. You wanna repeat this process for all the chiles that you have charred. It's looking pretty good. Okay. Now I have here a knife. I can go ahead and just cut that stem off and discard of the seeds that are inside. See, it's nice and soft on the inside there, which means it did exactly what we needed to do. Is get nice flavor from the charring on the outer skin, but yet it's still got a nice little flesh meatiness on the inside. It really holds its integrity and it's not too soft. If we, these peppers become too soft, when we're cooking inside of the masa with the rest of the filling, it's just not, the consistency isn't great. So we wanna make sure we keep the integrity of these chiles and don't overcook them or overchar them. So we can just do a nice little slice through them all the way through, just into these strips evenly. Kind of clean up my board here. 
and then we'll just do a nice little medium dice just to kind of match the consistency of our other ingredients like the corn and the onion that are going in our filling. And that is it. So we will repeat this for all the other chiles that we made or that we charred here. These have already been nicely cleaned with no peppers, seeds in this inside. And I'll just take small batches here and dice them up the same size. Okay, now our peppers are ready and we are ready to move on to the next step, which is prepare the filling for our tamales. This part is really easy because most of the hard work is done. These chiles have been prepped and now we're ready to add them to the corn. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these over to a bowl and we can saute them in a cast iron skillet. You can use a saute pan as well. I like using cast iron skillets just because it adds another layer of a little bit of cookness and charness from the cast iron skillet. So we have this and I'm also gonna grab some salt and a little bit of pepper as well. I'm going to add some oil in the pan. Add my onions here. Now they're just some medium dice on those onions and we want to cook this down until they're nice and translucent. Now I don't like to stir my onions around too much. I'll probably do them maybe like 30 seconds at a time just so they can fully cook on one side once you start stirring it up it'll start getting an evenly cook on all of your onions, but we just want it to be a nice translucent color before we start adding in the other ingredients. So I usually wait about 20 to 30 seconds before moving my onions around in the pan. I like them to get a nice little crisp on the outside, especially when you're pairing it with these other ingredients. So these here are becoming a little bit translucent, but I want a little bit of a color to these, to these onions. So I'm gonna let them do their thing. I'll serve them every like you know, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds at the most. We don't want them to burn, we just want them to brown. They're already smelling so good. Oh yeah, now they're getting a nice color on them. So we'll stir it up and wait like another 15, 20 seconds. So it looks like my onions are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and add our other ingredients here, which are the poblano chiles that we charred up earlier and took the skin off. And I also have some corn. Now you can use frozen corn, you can use fresh corn. And I put a little bit of char on these corns just to match the char and the flavor that are on the chiles. So this is gonna be such a great filling for our tamales. I can already smell how good they're gonna taste. So now that we have our veggie ingredients, we're gonna go ahead and add our spices. So I have some oregano. Now I always use the oregano that I find like in the Mexican or Hispanic area of the grocery store because it always smells a little bit more fragrant. So different, it's a different fragrance and flavor of oregano. But if you have regular oregano that you, you know, from your dried spices, you can use that as well. But this one particularly is the Mexican oregano. And then I have some chili powder here. If you can find chipotle powder, I recommend using that just to add another layer of flavor to this. But regular chili powder will be just as good. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that around. Now to allow these flavors to really pop, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper just to marry all of these flavors together. Now this is really to taste, salt to taste. Just means adding a little bit at a time. You can try it, you know, test it out and see if you need more, but typically just a little a sprinkle or two will be, will be fine for this. So look at the color, the char on all these vegetables. Now you know there's gonna be some depth and some layer of flavors in here, maybe a little bit of smokiness from that chipotle powder that I put in there. The aromas, very nostalgic, it's bringing me back. 
This is what the holidays are about. Being in the kitchen, spending some quality time with the ingredients, spending some quality time putting that love back into the food because you're gonna be spending this time with your friends and your family and you want it to be memorable. So there's nothing more memorable than putting something really, really delicious on the table that everyone's gonna be talking about from many, many more years. I think this is one of those fan favorites. So it's looking like we're done here. We just really wanted to marry all of these flavors together in our cast iron skillet. It's smelling amazing. The aroma is intoxicating, honestly. It's so amazing. So I'm gonna let this cool off and I'm going to go ahead and prep out my corn husk for the tamales and clear my station because I'm gonna need all of this room to prepare the tamales for the next step. Now the last ingredient we're gonna add to this tamale filling is going to be our cotija cheese here. So we've crumbled it up and it's just gonna go right in that mixture and mix it up. Now that's gonna give it a nice, like really salt, salty balance to this. So I didn't add too much salt earlier when I was on the stove sauteing this and mixing it all up, but now it's got an even balance. And we are ready to assemble our tamales. So I have some corn husk here that I have been soaking in warm water, so that way they're nice and flexible, so I can go ahead and start to build my tamales. So I have a spoon, and I'm just gonna take a spoonful here and use the spoon to fully spread it across. Now you can use your countertop here. And what we want to do is just create a nice, not too thick, but thick enough spread to hold our filling. And you want to leave some room at the top so that way the steam in our pressure cooker can be released and properly steam these tamales. All right, this is looking good. So this is the surface that we want to cover here. And then we'll add our filling. So you can get about two spoons full on this one. Just like that. Maybe a little bit more. And then what you'll do is you will fold over the flaps here. And you can fold the bottom up just like that. You can kind of use your hands to shape it out. And then we have our first tamale. Looks great. So I'm just going to keep building. I'll set that to the side and I'll keep building until we've reached about three dozen with this particular recipe. It takes, it makes about three dozen, but today we're just gonna do a small batch just to give you guys a demonstration. Now that we're done making our tamales, I'm gonna go ahead and clear my space so we can get ready to put the tamales in the pressure cooker. Now I have the insert to my pressure cooker here. I'm going to put in the rack. Now this rack is gonna sit a couple inches above the bottom, which is what we need. That's plenty of space for our water. We'll put about three to four cups of water at the base of this. So as the pressure cooker is cooking, that steam will rise up and start to steam our tamales. And the way that we want to place our tamales in here is the bottom of this is going to touch the bottom rack. Now if your tamales are a little too tall, that's totally fine. You can either trim this part if you have some space, which it looks like I do, or we can kind of set it at an angle with the rest of our tamales just like this. Now we're gonna have enough tamales to fill this entire pot, but if you don't, that's totally okay. You can still lay your tamales down just like this and kind of stack them around, just around, around. And they will still steam and be just as good as if they were standing up. So now I'll be steaming my tamales for 20 minutes in the pressure cooker. If your tamales are a little thicker, they might need a little bit more time to cook. But go ahead and start off with 20 minutes and check the doneness 
If your tamales have a little bit of firmness to them, they should be good. As they dry, they'll start to firm up a little bit more. But 20 minutes should be about the cook time that you're looking for. While our tamales are in the pressure cooker cooking, we can go ahead and get started on our salsa. So I have all these fresh ingredients here, some tomatillo, jalapeno, onion, cilantro, and lime juice. And I'm going to be adding in an avocado as well. You can char these ingredients, these onions and tomatillos and the jalapeno, just to add a little bit more of a depth to it. But I like to keep it nice and fresh to pair with the tamales that we've already charred the filling on that. So I like it to be nice and fresh and green. So I'm gonna put all of these ingredients into our blender raw. And the spiciness of this you can play around with. I usually start with about one fourth of the jalapeno and then work my way up because every jalapeno is a little different. They're all unique. Some are a little bit more spicy than others. This particular one I'm sure will be nice and spicy. I could smell a little bit of the seeds when I cut into it. And then we have a third of a bundle of cilantro here. And I like to keep my sims on just because it adds more flavor to your salsa. We're going to add some water to that just to help the consistency of the salsa and let it blend up. And then we have our lime juice and an avocado. Now be careful cutting. A lot of people like to hold the avocado in their hand before they cut it. It's very dangerous. You could cut yourself. I just spin it around on my cutting board. Pop that out. And a little bit of salt. And then we will blend. Let me move this over to the side. All right. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and blend this. Just blend it for about a minute or so. Let it do its thing. Right, see how easy that is? And then we'll go ahead and transfer it into our bowl here. Perfect. Look at this. Yay, we made salsa. Now I'm so excited to try this out with our tamales. This is gonna be so delicious. Now that our tamales are done, we can go ahead and let some of this steam out. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and take them out with some tongs here and place them on this plate and let them cool off a little bit. Yes, they look beautiful also. Now be careful, they're gonna be a little bit hot here. There we go. My favorite smell is the masa, the, the cooked corn masa. Now we'll go ahead and let these cool for a little bit. That way when we open them, they'll be nice and firm, but we don't want them to be too firm. And we'll get to enjoy them with our salsa. So our tamales are nice and cool. They're ready to be eaten. I'm gonna grab one here and open it up. It's like opening a present, you know? It's like, what's it gonna look like? What's it gonna be? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is what all of our hard work went into, this perfect little tamale here. And now we get to enjoy it with this salsa. Oh yeah, this is my favorite part. Let's cut into the middle and see what that looks like. Come on, get out of town. Look how yummy that is. And then, mm, it's so delicious. Wow, the brightness of the sauce 
is the perfect ending and balance to that bite of tamale. And now I'm going to go devour all of them. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and cheers to making new traditions.